How are Agilists faring in the pandemic? How are we finding meaning and purpose in these troubled times? How can we connect, inspire, and support each other? We will explore answers to these questions and more. This is Agile Caravan Sarai. I'm Sanjeev Augustine. Bob Martin is one of the 17 signatories of the Agile Manifesto and the creator of the Clean Code and Clean Agile movements. Uncle Bob, as he's affectionately known, is the author of six books on Agile software development and a doyen of the software craftsmanship approach. I first met Bob at an XP Universe conference way back in the early 2000s. My visionary boss at the time, Flavio Diomedi, had introduced me to extreme programming or XP as it's come to be known back in those days. So we were managing a number of teams using the extreme programming or XP process, and I was looking for a way to reconcile the concept of team autonomy. Specifically, the management methods of that day did not have an easy way to accommodate our now very common process of delegating authority to our software development teams. I developed my own management approach based on complex adaptive systems that reconciled that by introducing both autonomy and alignment. And I'd captured that on a white paper that I put online that quickly gained a lot of traction. One thing led to another, and Bob very graciously invited me to write a book in his Agile series with the publisher Prentice Hall. Now, almost two decades later, I want to draw attention to that singular act of graciousness. Thank you, Bob, for having faith in me as a young manager. Over the decades since, Bob has remained inspirational in his commitment to strong software development principles and practices. Along with Kent Beck, Martin Fowler, James Grenning, and Ron Jeffries, Bob is among the signatories who has remained very committed to software development as the core foundation for Agile methods. Today, Bob inspires thousands of Agilists across the world to stay committed to these first principles of Agile and to also continuously evolve and improve our profession. All right, welcome, uh, Bob. It's so good to see you again. Uh, thank you for joining me from your command center in uh, in uh, just outside of sh Chicago, I think, right? That's right, yeah. Um, we have this interview, and I have a few questions to ask you. But before we jump into the questions, I just wanted to thank you. It's been a, pr a privilege and an honor to know you uh, all these years. I think I first <laughs> we first met in 2001 at one of the XP Universe yeah, conferences. Yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah, yeah it was a while ago. So... Um, so we're coming up on this 20th anniversary of Agile, and uh, it's the anniversary of the signing of the manifesto. You were one of those original signatories. And so I just want to begin with asking you, what are you, some of your reflections that are looking backward over the last 20 years or so? Well, thank you for the opportunity. It's a joy to be with you. <laughs> and yes, it's good to see that that smiling face again. <laughs> Um, my reflections over the last several years, um, Agile, Agile has gone the way that so many other things in software has gone, where adjectives kept, keep on getting added to it and new descriptions keep on getting added to it. We have this need, I believe, to constantly see things go from release to release to release. But Agile is not like that. Agile is not a piece of software. It's not, it's not something that we add new features to from time to time. And so, so my, my reflections looking back are that it is time for the software industry to look back 20 years, see what Agile was, and remember that that's what we said we would do and what we need to be doing now. Well, that's um, profound in its simplicity, right? You're basically saying, let's remember where we came from, let's remember our foundation, and let's use, uh, let's carry that forward, and let's use that in, as we move forward. There is a back to basics nature here, right? So Agile was not conceived of to be the grand solution to all software problems. It was, it was originally, and I believe it still is, a very small idea, and mostly it was about getting small teams to do small projects. You know, it wasn't launching people to the moon, right? 
And that was the big problem we had 20 years ago. How do you get six guys to collaborate and do something well? And I mean, I think we solved that problem with Agile. Yeah. And now the, now the issue is, okay, well, how do you get a whole bunch of six man teams or 12 person teams? How do you, how do you get a bunch of those to collaborate on a bigger problem? And that is not an agile problem. That's an old problem of operations research that we've known about for centuries. Yeah. <laughs> or systems thinking and organize, putting the organizations together and stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. So thank you for that answer. I want to launch into the personal side. So, you know, I've known you, I've seen your family, you're a, you're very much a family man. And um, at the same time, you're the figurehead of this awesome movement that went from clean code to clean agile. So we're in this in the middle of this pandemic. Can you tell us how are you feeling in the pandemic? Anything new, any, anything exciting personally? You know, I mean... I mean, the pandemic affects me almost not at all, almost not at all. There's a few restrictions that that are a bit frustrating and some that um, I actually kind of appreciate. I have not traveled. <laughs> you know, I was on planes going to Europe and everywhere all over the place. And although that's lucrative, um, it's also a huge weight. And so for the past seven months, I've been home and I've been seeing family and I've been I've been uh, spending my time writing and Oddly, you know, here, here we are in this software industry. Let me uh, shut those shades. Here we are in this software industry. And I've got just as much work as I ever had. I've got, you know, people wanting my services just as much as ever. Um, other programmers are keeping just as busy as I am. You, you and I and, and, and this industry is immensely fortunate because we, and, and this is so ironic, we invented the tools that allow us to keep working. <laughs> keep employed. Yeah, it's uh, we should be we we should be looking at it, spread some of that blessing uh, to others for sure. Well, yeah. Well, I think <laughs> I think we have. I think most of the people who are working from home are using the tools that our industry created. So, in some sense, software saved the world from the pandemic. <laughs> and uh, the stock market is re reflecting that, I think, with all the tech companies <laughs> moving that needle forward. Yeah, well, um, we can have a discussion about that. A little more on the personal side. side uh, you, you and I were just talking about your flight simulator. You're saying oh, yeah. you're traveling. Are you still flying in your personal plane? Uh, even though oh, yes. Commercial flights? Yeah. Oh, yes. I fly in my personal plane. That's mostly personal work right now because you know, we don't fly to, to work engagements. So I, I fly to my, where I have various family around the country. And that's been a great blessing because I don't need to get on a commercial flight. I don't need to get, walk through an airport terminal. I just kind of hop in the plane, pack, pack the uh, wife and, and maybe some kids in and haul them down to somewhere else. <laughs> no TSA gauntlet to go through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Boy, I tell you what, it's, it's a lot more convenient. I can, you know, from Chicago, I can get down to um, Austin, Texas in five hours. You know, so <laughs> pretty easy. All right. So uh, last question for you, you know, from your vantage point, you're sitting, you know, you're uh, an esteemed member of the Agile community and leader there. We have a whole new generation of Agilists, as well as many of us who've been around for a while. And depending on what people are doing and how they're doing it and where they live, many of them are facing challenges and maybe getting a little despondent and just maybe looking to the future and like, hey, what's the hope out there? So what words of advice or inspiration of hope would you would you have for the global agile, you know, agile community? Well, I mean it's a the agile community and the software community are the same thing, as far as I'm concerned, right? That it's it's all part of the same mixture. And and the software community, the people involved with writing code are among the most fortunate people in the world because our civilization has decided, uh, without actually making the decision, to put the entire structure of civilization on top of our work. Civilization can no longer exist without programs, without software. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's nothing that happens on a day-to-day -day basis that does not involve software. I mean, to the point of you can't wash the dishes anymore 
You can't open the refrigerator anymore. You certainly can't drive anywhere. You can't buy anything. You can't sell anything. There's no law that can be written or enforced. There's nothing you can do in our society without yeah. software being smack in the middle of it. Your doorbell has software in it nowadays. <laughs> and it's watching you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> and it's watching you. So you and I and, and this whole community of ours sit at the fulcrum of civilization. <laughs> you know, that gives us, first of all, it gives us a tremendous responsibility to do an awful lot better than we've been doing. But it also gives us an immense amount of privilege. Right. And, and like I said, you know, we have created the tools that allow us to keep working and allow the whole world to keep working. We programmers rule the world. We don't quite understand that yet. But, but our position in the world is, is indispensable. Yeah. So I guess the, what is it, the Mark Andreessen quote was software is eating the world. So it's it's all eaten and digested, I guess, by now. <laughs> yeah. So any parting words of advice for all of your, all of your friends and fans and admirers and all the uh, folks in the Agile and the global software community? Oh, look up. Nothing, you know, things things are going the way they ought to go right now. Yeah, I know we've got a pandemic and everything like that, but that'll be done. It'll be over sometime, sometime, probably relatively soon now. Maybe sooner. I than just uh, announced that vaccine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And keep your head up because, boy, the next years coming are going to be really interesting in the software community. I I think we are headed for a very, very big change in the way we view who we are and what we do. Hmm. How so? Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, there's two things going on here. One of them is that the hardware is no longer go, you know, exploding at an exponential rate. So the hardware is plateaued out, and we, programmers, are suddenly on a plateau, something we're not used to at all. I mean, we followed that exponential curve right up to the moon. Now, now we're on the plateau. And number two, the weight upon us because of civilizations dependent upon us is so enormous that we are becoming responsible for lives and fortunes. And that means that we are going to have to develop a system of st standards and ethics and principles, mm. something we've never had before, yeah. <laughs> something that turns us into a profession. I, lo I love that closing thought. You began by saying uh, Agile was just about small teams and it was somebody else's responsibility to scale, but you're ending by saying that we have a tremendous weight and responsibility to develop what we're doing into a profession. So you did a bit of a bait and switch there. I'm gonna <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much, uh, Bob. It's always a pleasure to connect with you and I really appreciate your time. That's my pleasure. Always good to see you.